Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss when the tropics could become busy again. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Saturday, July 13th, 2024. The black arrows pointed towards a strong tropical wave moving through the Greater Antilles with four more tropical waves that we are tracking, two in the eastern Pacific Basin and then two in the main development region, one just coming off the coast of Africa. Here's the vorticity signature of our tropical waves are, we're monitoring as well as former disturbance one that has made its way inland across the east coast of the United States and you can see it's very stretched out at the moment. Uh, but did not become anything tropical, it just bring a lot of tropical moisture and heat and humidity up and down the east coast of the United States. Here's the strong tropical wave that's been moving through the greater Antilles today, bringing a lot of rain and downpours to U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, uh, we got Turks and Caicos, and also Hispaniola, as well as going down towards the ABC Islands and northern Venezuela, uh, with some scattered showers as well as this moves through the region. But we're not expecting any development over the next seven days. And one of the big reasons why in the Atlantic that's quiet at the moment, Saharan dust. So even though we have this moisture coming through Puerto Rico earlier today, the rest of this time you're going to start to feel the heat from the, and the suppression of the Saharan air just moving through the rest of the Caribbean over the next couple of days. And then right behind it, you see another batch coming off the African coast near the Cabo Verde Islands. You can actually see that on the satellite image. So if we right look at the uh, true color version of what we just saw, here's all, all of our tropical waves that we're watching. And if we switch over and look at this highlighted black uh, zone, you can see where the Saharan air layer and the dust is moving through the Eastern Caribbean and coming off the coast of Africa. And the one coming off the coast of Africa has got a nice big glob of it that's going to be moving through. And by the time we get to Tuesday, the portion that's in the Eastern Caribbean will have worked its way to the Western Caribbean by Tuesday. And the portion coming off the coast of Africa will just be approaching the Eastern Caribbean with an even bigger blob coming off the coast of Africa right behind it. So it's going to keep the areas in the Atlantic pretty suppressed tropical development wise for at least the next week or so. So you can see that here on the models. Here's the GFS 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. Again, the black hexagon is that strong tropical wave moving through Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Turks and Caicos today. The four tropical waves be, uh, just to its south, going around our Bermuda Azores High and into the eastern Pacific Basin. So we would normally see potential tropical development right now because we have low wind shear environments in those tropical wave zones. But it's that Saharan air layer that's really keeping everything suppressed. But you can see the eastern Pacific, I'll show you in a little bit starts to get a little bit interesting. There's not as much dry air there and it's gonna be more favorable for development. So if we put this into motion, you can see for the next seven days from now until next Saturday, not much really happens in the Atlantic Basin. So if we stop it here on next Saturday, July 20th, we have another wave moving through the Greater Antilles, where we have one today, another one will be moving through next week on next weekend. Two more tropical waves again in the Eastern Pacific Basin, and another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa, which will be right behind a plume of uh, Saharan air and dust moving through the main development region. But you see how the Western Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and into the eastern Pacific Basin is a lot more moist. Well, that's where we're going to have the potential for development as we get past next week. So in terms of wind shear, 
is high across the Caribbean. So we're not expecting much development in the Caribbean itself. But you can see the eastern Pacific Basin will be high, I mean, will be low wind shear environment. So that's where we're going to be focusing our attention potentially to see new storms forming. Over the next seven days, we have very weak uh, uh, time of seeing anything develop in the Atlantic. European model on the left, the ensemble model, GFS on the right. If we see any development, it would be something coming off the east coast of the United States. And if we look more long term, uh, the week after this week and the end of July, we do see the shift in the activity temporarily shifting to the Eastern Pacific Basin, where we have that hashtag of yellow and red right south of Mexico, uh, where we could see up to a 20% chance of development for the next two weeks after that. So not this week, we have a low chance this week, but the two weeks after that, the rest of the July going into August, Eastern Pacific looks to want to play catch up. So if we look at our MJO forecast, you can see this is showing all the way back to April 17th. This shows you all the rising air that's been going on in the tropics. So on the left side of your screen, that's the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific. The right side of your screen is the Atlantic, and right where I have that black line, just left of that, is the Eastern Pacific Basin. So you can see around, just after June 12th, we saw Alberto form. Then we saw around the end of June, we had Barrow form out in the middle of the Atlantic, right in front of a uh, equatorial Rosby wave, which helped it develop then we had, right after that, Chris form in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So it's right on the edge of where the transition is from Atlantic Basin to the Eastern Pacific Basin. And then we had Alita form right after Barrow briefly. So going forward, we have our black hour, which is where we are roughly today and we see the favorability is going to be shifting towards the Eastern Pacific Basin. That's where we have our green being highlighted by our black boxes. And also there'll be a little bit in the uh, middle of the Atlantic, but that's going to be in between our Saharan air outbursts. So we'll continue to moderate like we saw in the European model. There was that one little tropical wave that had a chance for development, but not showing support on either model. So that's why it's possible, but low. And then we get to the end of July as we work our way towards August, where I have our purple arrow in the, in our time frame. You see that big trapezoid that I have highlighted. It starts in the Eastern Pacific side and then works its way into the Caribbean and then the main development region. We have on the top right of your screen there, it's uh, highlighting blue there. So that's a Kelvin wave that's going to be forecasted to come through the last week of July towards the end of July into August. When we have, whenever we have those convectively coupled Kelvin waves, they're like mini pockets of favorability so for tropical development. So it will start in the Eastern Pacific, but once the Eastern Pacific then shuts down, the Atlantic would likely fire up right after that with favorability. So we'll keep an eye on it, but it looks like the Atlantic for the next week or two will be quiet. Maybe some sporadic uh, pockets of favorability uh, near the east coast of the United States or a tropical wave in between the Saharan uh, dust outbreaks. But it's looking like the Atlantic would be more favorable by the time we get to the end of July going into August. Focus right now would be in the Pacific Basin. We do have a 10% chance of a tropical wave developing way out in the Eastern Pacific Basin. And if we look at the GFS model from here, you can see that wave developing on the right side of your screen and then continues westward into the Central Pacific Basin for possible development. But it looks like at this point, Hawaii should be safe it doesn't look like if we go beyond seven days that it becomes anything significant. 
So we'll continue to track our tropical waves as they come across the Atlantic, coming off the coast of Africa, and, and some crossing Central America into the Eastern Pacific Basin. And in terms of tropical development, mid-July will be Eastern Pacific Basin, and then later July will be in the Atlantic Basin, most likely. So we'll keep an eye on all regions for the latest developments. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.